um, uh, mirrored G4 machine here. So that's what comes up as PowerPC. Next slide, please. The one other key feature that I really liked about LandRev was the, um, you know, we, we used ARD, as most people do who are an Apple shop, and ARD is fantastic for doing uh, on-the-spot, quick uh, help desk type stuff, being able to connect to a machine, you know, get into it and, and do a lot of the things that LandRev can do um, and vice versa. However, the one thing that always ha we had a problem with, with ARD is that uh, if you have stale DNS records, and I see this on a couple of the lists that I belong to um, quite frequently, where if you don't have your DNS set up 100% correctly, especially if you are in a Microsoft shop, and you are dealing with Microsoft DHCP and Microsoft DNS, and you don't have your uh, formulas set up correctly to make sure your DNS records get scavenged and everything else, very often in ARD, since you scan once and you make a list of computers, it's very possible that the, uh, the IP number will change. And what happens is you think you're connecting to one given computer, and the next thing you know, you're looking at someone else's computer because the IP number changed hands. And uh, there's no easy way to really update that. So what I like about LandRev is the fact that the client talks to the server at the heartbeat interval and makes sure that all that information stays up to date. So you always have the current information as to what the active IP address is and what the active name is. And uh, when you go to connect to a, a client, you don't have this issue. I like the fact that uh, you can uh, do remote control of your Windows or your OS 10 machines from either a Windows or OS 10 admin program. Uh, in the case of using Tiger uh, 10.4 or Windows, you can use a VNC program, which means that in OS 10 you have to have your VNC password enabled underneath the file sharing uh, preference pane. And uh, you can use a program like Tight VNC on Windows, uh, Chicken of the VNC on Tiger. Uh, there's also Jolly's Fast VNC, but uh, I do not believe that currently uh, works uh, integrated the way the others are. Um, you can also use ARD, but you have to have the computers already in ARD, so that kind of defeats the purpose of that. And if you're on Leopard, if you have an admin station on Leopard, uh, this built-in Leopard screen sharing, if you haven't had a chance to play with it, you, you really must. Um, the uh, built-in screen sharing client in uh, 10.5 is just, amazing, in my opinion, as far as the speed and, and the features it supplies. And uh, LandRev admin running on a Leopard machine can use that client to remote control machines. Now, there are a couple gotchas with that. The first is that it automatically starts up in observe, I mean, in control mode. So you don't have the ability to observe someone right off the bat. So when you first control their machine, you have control. And the second thing is, is that when you use uh, the screen sharing utility, the features that you like from ARD, like uh, being able to observe, being able to go into curtain mode, you know, uh, security mode so people can't see what you're doing, and manipulating the clipboard, uh, stuff like that, you can't do unless you uh, find the information that's floating around on the web on how to enable those features on Leopard, and I'll show you a screenshot real quick. Uh, the next thing is, is that you can use Microsoft's own RDP uh, program to be able to... Um, control Windows machines from a Mac client. And I know there's some continuing work on that on LandRev's behalf, but it does work. And um, uh, they uh, recently put in support for Microsoft's uh, now expired but still only available beta. Um, and uh, it works. I've, I've used it on occasion. But the VNC feature is much more important. And uh, matter of fact, we actually have the Windows version of the admin program and tight VNC installed in a Citrix environment so that I can actually, using Citrix remotely at a district, hit the uh, Citrix web interface and be able to bring up LandRev on any machine I happen to be on and, uh, you know, pop in and do stuff. So that's, that's really cool. And um, when you uh, go on to the next thing I was talking about, the screen sharing client, um, if you find the information on the web, which I believe uh, should be pretty easy to find, you can add things to your uh, screen sharing client on Leopard by adding more controls to the toolbar. And please note that this is not supported in any way, shape, or form by LandRev or by Apple. This is just one of those things. But some of the things that you get are observe mode, curtain mode, uh, clipboard, and stuff like that. Next slide, please. 
here's an example of the screen sharing client. You'll see that I am currently screen sharing um, a machine. And you'll see at the top you have those extra controls there, which you do not normally have. Um, and you can go into curtain mode. So if you're controlling someone's machine, you don't want them to see what you're doing, you just click on the little curtain mode icon up there, the fourth one in, and uh, you can do that. You can take a snapshot of the screen by clicking on the uh, little camera icon uh, and other things. Uh, screen sharing client also is very good with multiple displays. I have a 30-inch uh, cinema display on my desk with a 19-inch LCD off to the side. And when I remote control my machine from home, if I'm working on stuff, I can disable and perfectly scale that 30-inch monitor and be usable on another computer. Uh, so it, it's really nice. Next slide, please. The other big feature, which really, 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 I, I really liked about this, is the computer tracking or theft tracking feature that um, LandRev has. And the way it works is um, you give control, obviously, to a certain amount of people who can turn this feature on and off using those controls that Bao mentioned earlier. And when you enable tracking of a computer, what actually happens is you make your LandRev server available to the Internet over whatever port you have configured. And as soon as the computer gets put on a network outside your, your home network, the heartbeat tries to come in to your existing LandRev server. And once it establishes that connection, it gets told, hey, computer tracking is turned on. And then that computer will start sending back at regular intervals, will start sending back um, screenshots. And if you have a built-in eyesight camera, it will start sending in um, uh, camera shots. So you can see here my uh, lovely house that I uh, uh, took, the laptop was sitting on my uh, living room table. And on the screen, you'll see I had a uh, Word document open there. Uh, this is a test of how this works from home. And if you look at the top, even though I blurred it out, you can see that uh, you have the information. You have the track time. You have the tracked computer public address, which would be the network address of the house or organization where that information is coming from. And then you have the full tracked computer resolved the DNS name. And that DNS name right there can be used by local police to get a warrant to query Verizon or whoever to find out who had that DNS name at the times that are indicated there, which will help the police try to track down your stolen laptop. So, um, it's an excellent feature. Uh, yes, we have used it, and uh, yes, it has uh, gleaned some results for us, um, but it, it in and of itself is just a fantastic feature for trying to, uh, especially when you're in a school environment and you have a lot of laptops and you're worried about you know laptops getting up and missing. I've actually had some laptops we thought were stolen, which actually were still in a classroom um, because they were misplaced, and by the time we found out they were back, I had to... Uh, turn the tracking off and I had, you know, a good 20 snapshots of the teacher and students <laughs> using the machines in the classroom. But um, you'll see that the feature works fantastic. And the key is having your LandRev server accessible to the outside world so that the screen, so the heartbeats can come in and the, the information can come in. Uh, fantastic feature. I can't speak highly enough of it. Now let's move on to install ease. Um, I started making packages for our, for our rollout. If you have followed me in some of my other webcasts, we have a uh, web-based uh, PHP SQL imaging system we use here along with NetRestore. And because of that, I've repackaged most of our own software. And back in the day, uh, several years ago, there weren't as many good tools for using, for creating Apple-compatible packages. Um, I've used, all, I mean, I've used LogGen, I've used FileBuddy, I've used, uh, uh, what's the one called, Package Differ Maker or something like that. Uh, I've used, a, I've looked at and used a bunch of them. But with LandRev also came this InstallEase, and InstallEase is fantastic in that it is snapshot-based, or you can manually uh, make uh, packages. It just brings up the interface, and you just put the package together the way you want. You see a full preview of all the found files uh, anywhere on the system. Uh, it's very easy for you to manually include hidden directories. Uh, if you need to add a hidden directory, you can do that. It creates Apple packages, of course. It also creates an Iceberg project file. If you're familiar with making packages, you may have heard of Iceberg. It's a wonderful package uh, environment. And it allows you to create a project file with all the pertinent information already in there so that if you need to make some tweaks, uh, if you need to do some more custom